Hello, my name is Michael Smith and I'm currently translating the Middle English romance William of Palerne, which is also known as William and the Werewolf. I'm often asked what inspires me to translate these romances, what's within them which I find so interesting and exciting. And I think the truth of the matter is that we're dealing with the English language as it's beginning to emerge in the 14th century. It's finding a fluidity all of its own and a beauty. Also, the words themselves, they speak to us because they're quite close to modern English. And what I particularly like about these romances is the voice of the narrator. So you have the story which is carrying on throughout, but interspersed with that is the voice of the scribe. And you'll hear him say things like, I wit you forsooth, I, I tell you truly. Um, he will interject on behalf of the characters. And also you find from time to time little phrases which just jump out of the manuscript. Proverbs, for example. And here are a few that I've come across recently from a romance called Bevis of Hampton. And then I'll conclude with one also from William and the Werewolf. They're quite interesting. See what you think of them. And uh, I, I don't even think I'll need to translate them on your behalf. The first is from the Cheetah manuscript of Bevis of Hampton, and it dates from around 1500. Men call him Ascopard about, of him forsooth I have great doubt. Lordings, he said, arm you well, both in iron and in stale. Though Ascopard be never so stark, many hondes make light work. Many hands make light work. Here's another from the Cambridge manuscript, Cambridge um, 238, which um, is from around about the same period, perhaps a little bit earlier. Deliver a thief for the gallows, and he will the hate by all hallows. So treat somebody nicely who you know has been wrong to you, and they will turn against you. Wonderful, wonderful advice from the scribe. Here's one uh, from the Naples manuscript from about 1457, again from Bevis of Hampton. And here the, the female lead, Josian, uh, regrets speaking rashly. Men say, quod show, in old rot, that woman is bolt is soon shot. A woman's bolt is soon shot. So she's let go all her her position and now she's left foolish because she's made herself look stupid in front of the hero Bevis. And then we go back to the earliest extant example of Bevis, which is the Anglo-Norman Beuve d'Antone. And forgive my French, my normal French is rubbish. My Anglo-Norman is appalling. But uh, see what you can make of this. Que mieux volt un que, et que dieus que de aver. What? Well, that is loosely translated as having a similar meaning to a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. It's not a literal translation. In fact, uh, as far as I can work out, it doesn't really say that, but the meaning is the same. That's fascinating. And these words are coming from a thousand years ago or more, and they're talking to us today. And that's what I like about translating medieval romances. But if we look now at William of Palerne, William and the Werewolf, here are some interjections by the scribe, which uh, I hope I can convey some of the enthusiasm that I feel hearing the voice, and maybe you'll enjoy it too. Lords, listeneth here too. If yow they think us. The scribe is addressing the audience, the notional audience, you and me. People, listen to this if you if you if you would like to, if you think it worthy. So he's he's encouraging us to get more involved in the story as we go along. 
And here is a section where I'll just read a passage, but he, he, you are taken on the story and then he suddenly jump out at you. He'd be tied that time, they travelled all a night, out of forest and frithers and all fair woods. No covert might they catch, the country was so plain, and as it doored licked a day to many the south. They had a seemly sect of a city noble, enclosed cumlick about with fine castle work. So what that means is it, it betides then that they travelled at night out of the forests and woods, and then they were in the open plains, no cover to make to the catch, no cover might they find. The country was so plain, the country was so flat and level. And as it dawned licked a day, as the daylight dawned, to me near the south, to tell you the truth, they had a seemly sector of a city noble. They could see now a noble city, all seemly and beautiful, enclosed cumlick about with fina castel work, enclosed beautifully about with crenellations, tur turrets and towers. So you get this real view of the medieval world as given to us by the scribe. He's telling us not just the action, but he's seeing a world that he knows and he's sharing with us. So we just have to dip a little bit behind the words to see what he's saying. Here he interjects, the narrator takes on a conceit almost of a talker and he's saying, uh, right, now we're gonna talk about something else. You might recognize the first word in modern vernacular. Carp, we how the king was cast in great thought. He dared as a doted man for the best deeds, and was so stiff in a study that none him stint micter. So that means, carp we how. We'll now speak of how the king was cast in great thought, was deep in thought. He dared as a doted man for the best deeds. He was thinking about what best to do, and was so stiff in a study, he was so deep in study and thought, that none him stint micked, that none might disturb him. And finally, I think my one of my favourite passages is right at the end of the romance, and it's where the scribe suddenly reverts back to his patron, in this case Humphrey de Boon, sixth Earl of Hereford and Essex, a deeply pious man, an invalid, and the scribe remembers him after five and a half thousand lines of beautiful narrative. But, fair Frondus, for God's love and for your own menska, ye that licken in love switch things to hear, praiseth for that good Lord that gart this do mac, the hender, Earl of Hereford, Humphrey du Bowne, the good King Edward's daughter was his dear mother. He let make this matter in this manner speak for him that can know no French nor never understand. Biddeth that blissful burn that bocked us on the road and to his mother Mary of mercy that is well. If the Lord God live, will he in earth lengus. And when he wends of this world, wealth without end, to lang in that licking joy that lasteth evermore. And God give all good grace that gladly so bade us, and pertly in paradise a place for to have. So the scribe is saying, But, fair friends, for God's love and for your own honour, you that like to hear such things as I've told you, praise that good Lord, that made this, allowed this to be made, the High Earl of Hereford, Humphrey de Boone. The good King Edward's daughter was his dear mother. He let make this matter, he let make this book, in this manner speak, to speak to you in the way I have told it. For them that know no French, nor never understand, nor don't understand it. So, the scribe 
and Humphrey have created this story not for the aristocracy and those that keep grand libraries, but for you and me. Well, not quite also for his higher uh, managers and estate owners, etc. But nonetheless, he's making the French accessible to the English tongue. Biddeth that blissful burn that brought us on the road, and to his mother Mary, of mercy that is well, ye if the God, Lord God live, will he in earth lengers. He's asking for Christ and Mary that uh, Humphrey de Boone will be remembered and honoured. And when he wenders of this world, wealth without end, and when he dies, to leng in that leaking joy that lasteth forevermore, that his soul shall be blessed in paradise. These are the wonders of these great medieval romances. And in translating them, I hope I'm able to bring across the joy that I have in them, but also the great inner beauty which they can tell us today. William and the Werewolf is different to Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, which I've translated before and published through Unbound, different again from King Arthur's Death, which was quite a dark and bleak tale. This is a story of hope, of joy. It's a story of justice, of how people should behave to each other. It's about a story of good, good lords and good ladies, how they should care for those who are not as privileged as themselves. It's a joyous read, a really beautiful story. And uh, I hope very much, those of you who have already pledged to support it, that you'll get great pleasure out of reading it. And if you've not yet pledged and you'd like to do so, uh, please follow the link at the end of this film. It's a great, great romance and one that deserves to be heard again and will be with your help. Thank you very much for watching this brief film. Ah, I nearly forgot. There's the proverb from William and the Werewolf, which I mentioned earlier. And here it is. I'll leave you with it. For Botic have bought of me bal be a short team. I am dead as Dornell. Now do all they will. I think you recognise it. For if my heart break be not cured, within a brief time I will be dead as a doornail. Please do all that you can. Isn't that wonderful?